Hello, you plonkers, and welcome back today to another video on the Druzy channel. Nine things we learned round 11. And before the nine things, I want to tell you some personal things. So, for the last two months, three months, for the whole of this year, really, I've been at uni. Finally, in a little bit of a break, not too much, but it's just going to be a little bit less hectic over the next two months. So I want to dedicate more time to the YouTube channel. So, make sure you subscribe if you're not already, because uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. I'm going to Melbourne this week, so there will be a vlog out from my Melbourne trip. I'm going to see Kados filming a goal kicking challenge on Thursday. We're going to go film that, so make sure you keep your eyes locked. And if you see me out and about in Melbourne, come say hello. It'd be great to see some Melbourne plonkers. So, as I said, uni done, more time to dedicate to YouTube, and I've got some ideas up here that I'm going to hopefully implement in the next few months. So Druzy Enterprises will be growing, so keep your eyes locked to the channel. If you want to support the channel, all you got to do is click that thumbs up button and subscribe. Before we get into it, make sure you go follow my Instagram at underscore Druzy to see what I'm up to in Melbourne and just what I get up to. Just follow my Instagram up at underscore Druzy. Here we go. Nine things we learn. Number one, umpires love common sense. Friday night football was great again, and probably because Sydney are a good football side and they were playing on Friday night. Richmond come out firing in this game and they come out to about a five goal lead at some point in the second quarter I believe it was looking like it was going to be the same sort of game as the Carlton game went the previous Friday night for Sydney but they fought back and ended up winning and that comeback was led by Buddy Franklin who gave Josh Gibkes a lesson in football Gibkes was good but when you're coming up against Buddy Franklin as a 19 year old it's going to be a tough day. But there was controversy at the end of the game when I can't remember what the free kick was for exactly, but there was a free kick paid to Richmond and Chad Warner kicks the ball into the Sydney Harbour. Personally for me, I think this is a 50 metre penalty. If you're given a free kick and then someone kicks the ball away, that's a 50. It would have let Dion Prestia go into the, the 50 metre region and have a shot on goal. But I can't stand how the umpires have come out and the AFL have come out and said, oh, it was a common sense approach when all season none of these rules have made sense at all the umpire descent rule it's so subjective just doesn't make sense it varies umpire to umpire the prohibited contact rule where a player just gives a player a bump on on the shoulder coming out of a boundary throw and it, it results in a free kick so this common sense approach is just a load of hogwash as far as i'm concerned there's no common sense in the umpiring whatsoever in the afl at the moment and you can't say common sense was applied in this game when there were 60 free kicks paid it was an absolute whistle fest it sounded like i was at the 2010 world cup listening to this game of football on the TV. And just players not being able to show emotion, giving an opposition player a bump, showing some emotion after a free kick's been given, and then you say, oh, common sense was applied here. What about for the last 11 rounds of the season, umpires? I'm not having that at all. I think that's a load of hogwash. Number two, Brisbane get a knockout with their backs on the ropes. GWS come out firing at the Gabba on Saturday morning. They kicked eight first quarter goals and they were up by 30 points in the first quarter. It was the highest opposition score at the Gabba since about 1995. GWS just seemed like they were a step ahead of the Brisbane Lions. It looked like the Lions were having a little bit of latency issues, like they were playing Fortnite, and they would, you know, you'd try to chuck up a wall, but before you know it, your head's been shot off by a bloody shotgun or whatever guns are in Fortnite these days. But the Lions just did what Sydney did the night before, sort of just chipped back into the lead. Eventually, the quality of Brisbane shone through. They have a solid game plan that they've been implementing for years now compared to GWS, it's their second game under their new coaching panel. The game plan was there, which they could follow for four quarters. GWS fell away in the end. Another three-vote game for Lockie Neal. The Lions had their backs on the ropes. They come back and got this win. But again, they conceded 96 points. You can't be conceding that much if you're a top side. There's holes in this Brisbane side. There's a leakage, and they need to get some bloody super glue or sticky tape and, and patch that up. Some duct tape, some WD-40, another tradey term that I'm, I'm not aware of because I'm a, I'm a white-collar man. So hopefully if GWS can score 96, Freo can put 140 past them. Number three, Geelong are better than both the Adelaide teams. Last week, Geelong beat the Power. This week, they beat the Crows. I didn't watch either game. Does anyone actually care? Because I, for one, do not. Good job, Geelong. You're better than both the Adelaide teams. <laughs> Number four, Flag Mantle is back, baby. After a disappointing two weeks in the wet against Gold Coast and Collingwood at home as well, Longmuir come out in a press conference after the Collingwood game and said the players were getting ahead of themselves, the club was getting ahead of themselves. You just need to take it a week at a time because at the end of the day, we're only in round 11. And I know that we've been bad for a long time, so it's hard not to get excited when we're having big wins, but we just need to simmer a little bit. And going into this Melbourne game, I didn't give us much of a chance after the last two weeks, and just after years of 
disappointing results, to be honest. I just didn't have faith that the Dockers could go over and just get a massive, massive result at the MCG. But I was pleasantly proven wrong. We dominated the first quarter without putting too much score on the board. Most of that quarter was played in our front half, and we were dominating out of the middle as well. So in the first quarter, I was like, sick. We can't kick goals, but we are up for this contest. We can compete with one of the best midfields in the competition. Come the second quarter, Melbourne just do what Melbourne do. They love capitalising on a period in a game where a team has a lap. So Frio had about five minutes off in that second quarter, and Melbourne got out to a four-goal lead. And I was just thinking, right, classic Frio. Show up for the first quarter like we did last week, and then disappear in the second like we have for the last two. It was just looking like this isn't going well. My emotions are going to be hurt once again. <laughs> However, the third quarter of this game was probably the best quarter I have ever seen the Fremantle Football Club play in my 20 years of being alive. It was the best win the Dockers have had since the 2013 prelim against Sydney. Frederick, Schultz, Walters in that third quarter were magnificent. Lobb probably played the best game he's ever played in purple. Sean Darcy got on the score sheet in that third quarter as well and Tab kicked one. We got eight goals to, I think, one from Bailey Fritch in that third quarter. We out melbourne Melbourne. We dominated them out of the centre. We were set up well behind the ball, and the goals just kept flooding in. The pressure around the ball was great. It was a finals-like performance from the Dockers, just in terms of the intensity around the ball. And we polished it off in the fourth quarter to just walk home to victory after that big third. I thought we might be able to make a meal of it in that fourth quarter, but Melbourne just had no responses to the questions that we were posing them. We've beaten the Premiers at the MCG, who haven't lost in, I think, 17 games. We beat Geelong in Geelong. We got Brisbane this week. Mate, Frio, flag man. I mean, come on. Has any side had bigger results this year? No, because no one's beaten Melbourne. Has anyone beaten Geelong at the Cattery this year? I don't believe so. Flag Mantle is back, baby. This break in nine things we learn is brought to you by our good friends at Manscaped who provide the world's leading grooming services for below the bell. And lads, I'm going to have to let you in on something. I didn't use a Manscaped razor because I was shaving my face the other day, although you can go to manscaped.com and get razor blades, I believe. But look what I did to my nose, right? I just had a, a little razor and I, sh I was shaving my monobrow because I didn't want to look like Anthony Davis and I just took so much skin off my bloody nose and if I had have used a nice top quality product like the people at Manscaped off you this wouldn't have happened it gives me a greater appreciation for how good those products are because I did a bit of manscaping last week and there was no issues no nicks or cuts at all due to their skin safe technology I could see what I was doing with the LED light the ceramic blade makes it such a smooth job so if you want to do yourself a favor Head over to manscaped.com and use code DRUZY20 at checkout. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shaver on the market for below the belt grooming. Do yourself a favor, clean up down below the belt. You won't regret it. DRUZY20 at checkout. Link in the description. Go get yourself a good product. Number five, the West Coast Times 2 principle. Call me biased. Call me one-eyed. Call me a pig. Call me to discuss the social and political climate of the world after a global pandemic where politics with hunter-gatherer minds are running human civilization with nuclear power at their fingertips. But when discussing the fifth thing I learnt in this round of football, I want to discuss the two times West Coast principle. When West Coast win and Frio lose, it makes the Frio loss two times worse because your rivals get a win, you go to work, you go to uni, whatever, you go to school, you... you hear it all day long from West Coast fans. And that's why I am such a mouthy Freo fan for the years of traumatic abuse that I have received from West Coast. So after the Freo game at the MCG, we head back to Optus to see West Coast play the Bulldogs. They lost again on their home deck by three digits. It was a 101 point margin. Coming off that big win at the MCG against the Premiers, I was on cloud nine. And then watching West Coast following that Freo game, it just made that Freo win taste even better two times better i was already feeling great and you just see west coast get pumped on their home deck went out to perth last night i'm feeling a bit dusty martin today but it was good to see the west coast fans walking through perth and going up to him and saying hey mate i didn't actually uh see the west coast score i obviously had seen the west coast score how did they go oh mate no good nah we got absolutely flogged who do you go for i go for frio come on boys <laughs> <laughs> number six gold coast are good hawthorne are bipolar we know this. The lesson has been learned. I actually tipped Gold Coast to win this game just because I think Gold Coast were going to fit into the conditions at Darwin better. It's a more tropical 
climate. And Hawthorne played in Tassie last week. So they've gone from the cold south tip of Australia up to the bloody moistness that is in the NT. So I thought Gold Coast would win this game. And they've just been competing week in, week out, Gold Coast. They obviously beat my boys a couple of weeks back. They've been getting some good wins. They competed against the Bulldogs last week. So I had full faith that they were going to win this game. And they did. They controlled proceedings. They won the clearances. More inside 50s. More contested possessions than the Hawks on Saturday night. And it was just an easy win for Gold Coast. I rate the Suns highly this season. This is probably the best Gold Coast side we have seen ever, I reckon. Big call, but it was a massive win. They've got North and Adelaide in the next two weeks. They sit 12th at the moment. They could push for the top eight. I don't think they'll make it, but they're going to be a, they're going to be a tricky side to come up against the Suns for any team because they just compete week in, week out. Number seven, Max King's efficiency in his role. Against the Roos, Max King had three goals from seven touches, and last week against St. Kilda, he had six goals from seven touches. He doesn't need much of the ball to impact the game at all as a key forward. He's going to take big marks at important times, and he's got his set shot looking a little bit better now. If there's a high ball into the 50 for the Saints, you better bet that Max King will be flying at it with that athleticism he poses. He's efficient, takes marks, kicks goals, doesn't need much of the footy, and for every goal he kicks, he gets another hair on his moustache. Number eight. The importance of Jacob Wiedering. Shoutouts Collingwood. Big win. They're looking good. They beat my boys last week. Colton this week. I've loved watching Collingwood play this year. They're a very exciting side. However, I think a pivotal moment in this game, and I hate when your team wins and the commentators or pundits bring up that another team's player got injured, like Stephen May against Frio. But I think Jacob Wiedering is such a vital pillar in this Carlton side that it sent shockwaves through Carlton when he went off injured. He's been in their defense now for years. He's a key pillar. The sort of game plan is molded around him from the defensive half of Carlton. In those middle two quarters, Carlton just looked a little bit shook, a little bit lost without the presence of Jacob Wiedering back there because he's such a, a big presence, as I said. So took him about two and a bit quarters to sort of settle and find their way back into the game, get into some flow. But Collingwood were just there for the contest all day long. So it was going to be a tough task to come back and beat the Pies. Thank you very much. Solidifies Frio's spot in the top four for now. And number nine... Port need to get this forward line firing. With Charlie Dixon back into the side, this Port Adelaide forward line, on paper, in terms of individual quality, is right up there, tip-top, with the best forward line in the AFL, I believe. Look at the keys they have. Dixon, Finlayson, Marshall, who's been really good this season, and you've got Mitch Georgiades. Boak slid forward to allow Rosie to go into the middle as well, so you've got Boak, Motlop, Robbie Gray, who's just a solid contributor, even though he is ageing. And there's probably others that I'm missing as well. It was raining today at Adelaide, so it wasn't a high scoring game. But they need to start getting this mid to forward connection right. They've started getting wins on the board now. And that's what good sides do. They just find a way to win. So Port have rediscovered that. Now they just need to get this system clicking. They just need to get the continuity between the mids to forwards. They need to be able to move the ball from the back line all the way up. Because that forward line is potent. Get it in there. And it could be dangerous. Maybe they need a few more smalls in there. Like they are very like key forward, big boy heavy. Nevertheless, it's dangerous. Big bodies win games of football a lot of the time. Once Port Adelaide get this forward line firing, now that it's back to pretty much full strength, it could be dangerous if they get it right. And that's going to wrap up the ninth. Thanks for before you click off. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you're new. I'm trying to hit 7.5k by the end of June. So please help me reach that goal if you can. Go follow up my Instagram at underscore Druzy, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Drew Footy Show. Take care, you plonkers.